Hi, this is Mike Botts. I'm wanting to give you a first uh, hand look at the uh, Sensor ML viewer and editor that we are currently working on. Uh, I want to first let you know that this is a work in progress, so there are a lot of improvements going on daily. So please, uh, please ignore some of the uh, the clumsiness and the ugliness of some things. Uh, first thing to to notice, though, is the look and feel. Uh, we have tried to to create a look and feel that looks very much like a spec sheet that you might expect to receive from a sensor. Uh, we think this is a good way to, one, to be able to view information, and two, uh, it's, it's something that I think we can get the OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers, to, to start to provide us the information that we need for our sensors, if they can actually just feel like they are creating a, uh, a spec sheet. So both the viewer and the editor will, will have this look and feel, as you'll see in a moment. So um, you'll also notice that you can load up files from uh, local files, from a URL. You can also uh, do profiles, create profiles, as well as use profiles when you're editing, and we'll see a little bit of that later. And then after you've done editing things on the form, then you'll be able to view as XML and pretty soon as JSON as well. So let's get started with a, a simple example here with a Davis 7817 thermometer. You can see the, uh, again, the information looks very much like a spec sheet, but you have the sensor ML properties that, that uh, are available to you. Things like identifiers and classifiers, uh, characteristics, which are things that, that don't necessarily affect the measurements, but, but they're char characteristics of the sensor. Capabilities are things that that do affect the sensor or uh, are important to know about data quality or other things. Contact information, various links to get to images and documentation, and then uh, typical process information like the inputs, the outputs, and the parameters. And one of the things you'll notice is that is that the spreadsheet, I mean the spec sheet is is an interactive spec sheet. So when there are things like a calibration curve, then you'll be able to click on uh, little icons like this and be able to see things. Uh, you'll be able to also look at the, the data table if that's important to you. Uh, and then we'll also add in the ability to be able to export this out into a CSV file so you can take it right into an Excel spreadsheet. So let's look at another example. In this case, when, what we're going to do is we're going to go out to the web and grab a sensor ML description that is, exists out on the internet. And as you can see from this, this file, uh, the sensor ML is encoded in XML. Uh, it's a very nice language for, for storing all this information, but it's not a very nice thing to, for a human to look at. It's really intended more for machine to machine. So what we're going to do is bring that over into the editor. Here I'm going to say I want to get this from a URL, paste in my URL, hit load, and we see uh, a nicer view of, of this particular sensor system. This particular sensor system is actually a full processing system. It includes a sensor for uh, measuring ocean conditions, as well as processing chain and uh, QA, QC testing. So what what you'll look at here, well, let me just say a little more on that. So this really just sort of shows how sensor ML can provide uh, a full provenance for an observation, from everything from the tasking commands that were applied to, to the sensors, to the processes, to the QA, QC testing. So it really provides a, a full provenance for any, any observation. So let's slide down here just a second and look at, at the bottom. What we see are a collection of components. One of those appears to be a sensor. The other ones appear to be processes. So you see the components described there, and we'll, we'll show you what happens when you click on those in a moment. And then the, these are the connections. These show you that data coming out of one, uh, one component can go into another, or uh, some of the uh, outputs from, from various ones can go into to more than one. So. Uh, in future versions of the of editor, will also allow you to be able to to bring up another view and drop boxes in there, consisting of these components, 
and then just be able to graphically draw the connections between the outputs of one box into the inputs of the other. So it'll make it much nicer than having to do that through XML. But for the moment, let's go up and, and look at this. Right now we have some inputs. These are uh, more than likely observable properties. You can't see that from the description here, but in future versions you will be able to see that they're observable properties. And then we have some quantities and categories and other things that are that are outputs. And you'll see these are broken down into various uh, data records for probably different testing going on. You may also be seeing these eye icons and wondering what those are. These are actually links to to uh, ontological definitions of those terms that we've used. And this is where the true interoperability comes uh, in things like SensorML and SWE Common. By, by providing links to uh, terms, then we can, can understand that we might be talking about the exact same things. Uh, when when s this person says wind waves, if you've got using the same definition, then we know we're talking about the same thing. So uh, all of these terms are stored in ontologies. In this case, they're going to an ontology uh, that was created as part of the MMI uh, ontological tools and being uploaded into that. You may also notice these code spaces. Uh, what those do is they go to ontology, but they also they describe, in this case, uh, flag definitions for QA, QC testing, and they provide the, the actual options that you, you have there for that. Uh, in addition to to the ontological definitions, you see things like the uh, units of measure and so forth. There are no values in this this particular example because they're actually uh, defining the the inputs and outputs of these processes without the data uh, being specified as to what they are. Uh, but let's go to one of these components. So this uh, MVCO Workhorse 1200. If we click on that, we go to the definition uh, or the description of that. And again, you see the unique IDs, you see the description of it, you see keywords, you see the typical things like identifiers and classifiers. Uh, in this case, we're talking about a particular instance of a deployed sensor, so you'll find things like serial numbers and the, the deploying agency, in this case, Wood, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. You'll also see things like valid time, so this is valid since uh, 2009, March 20th. Um, we'll improve the, the look of the valid time. You see things like uh, contact information. In this case, this is a nice one because it also has history. It's not being shown very well in this current uh, version of the editor viewer, uh, but this will be much nicer later. So. Uh, Again, there'll be dates and so on. Those do exist in the file. They just need to be shown here. So if, now if I click on one of these, uh, what I end up seeing is that it's a history event type. And for this particular uh, ontology, the events that you can have are things like clean faces, pressure point, port, uh, sensor change, and sensor deployment. So those are defined here. Now, one of the things that SensorML 2.0 brought is a much better handling of, of inheritance. Uh, before it was kind of confusing, it didn't make a lot of sense. But now we see that this is a deployed sensor, and it's of this particular type here. So if we want to find out what that type is, we want to drill down a little bit more and find out information perhaps from the original equipment manufacturer, then we click on that link. But hang on for just a second. There's also configuration that we can do in this one, and this is not a very good view. This needs to be improved. But in this case, there were certain parameters that were set in this file, and, uh, and there was also a mode that was set. Uh, in this case, there are various depth options for the sensor, and you, you can specify which one you have on, on your, in your deployment. Another thing you see here is, is position. And in this case, it's giving latitude, longitude, altitude, as well as some orientation, such as true heading. In future versions, <clears throat> there'll be a little icon here that you can click on that will take you uh, directly to that location on a map, so you'll see where it's located. 
If it ends up being trajectories, then those will also be shown on the map. So that was the first look at the sensor ML viewer. Uh, we'll be making improvements on that on a daily basis, so you can keep coming back and checking out the new viewer. Uh, right now, what I want to do is to show you uh, where we're heading on the sensor ML editor. So what I'm going to do is to go here and select a file on my drive. This is the RDI Workhorse 1200, which is what we were just looking at. And when we load that, you see right now the view is, is essentially the view of the, is the viewer view. Uh, it looks exactly like it did before. Uh, what we want to do to make this, to be able to edit this, is go click and to get into edit mode. Now we're in edit mode, but again, as you see, it has the same look and feel as the viewer. This is on purpose. We want, we want to make this as easy as possible for people to be able to create sensor ML documents. And we think by just uh, giving it a look and feel of a spec sheet, that that's something they're comfortable with. So uh, depending on the profile, later you'll see that you're, you're able to add new properties and so forth. But for the moment, I want to be able to just show you uh, the ability to, to click on these, these properties and, and edit those. Um, what happened with the editor were these small three dots that show up now at the end of the properties. So let me go click on one of those, say beam, beam frequency, and we now see, uh, see a form uh, pop-up window that comes up and shows us four properties that we can, we can go in and edit. In uh, future versions, there'll be more capabilities to add things like allowed values and, and data quality and so forth. Uh, but we can go in here and say, change this name to something. We can also go over to the, uh, to the ontology and have it search on some terms. Uh, maybe we look for temperature. So now we can go through and, and see all the things that had temperature in them. So maybe we decide uh, this thing's going to be uh, temperature limits. Once we click on that and save, then now this transfer is here. And uh, maybe I go change this to temperature limits. And now we're not talking about Hertz, so we maybe say this is Celsius. And uh, say save. A single value is not really a good idea for temperature limits, but we're just playing here to show you. So now you see the new name shows up. I click on the icon. And now what we see in, as our definition are the temperature limits. So that's how easy it is to go in and edit things and change values, change the names, and so forth. So the next thing I want to show you, though, is, is being able to go pick a profile and, and have the form sort of uh, tell us what we really need to get, get in there and add. So we're taking a profile that's an anemometer. The rules of the have been defined as to what we expect to, to see in an anemometer. So when we click that, we end up having several properties already showing up here. And uh, these are based on a set of rules. So now we have boxes that we expect, they expect us to go in and, and fill in with, with particular values. Uh, you can do things like, like add identifiers. Uh, you can go in and, and, and change these, but there are certain things that you won't be able to change. There are other things like that you will be able to add and so forth. In some cases where there are constraints such as allowed values and such, you'll be able to have a drop-down box and, and go pick that. So, uh, so that's where we're heading with the, uh, with the profiles. I should tell you too that as you're editing a, a sensor ML document, you can also uh, get to a point to where you save that as a profile, and so that will save that as a RelaxNG file to be able to be used as a profile for, for other, other people who are creating instances of that sensor. Uh, you'll be able to save out as XML and ultimately save out as uh, JSON as well. So that's where we're heading. I hope that's helpful. Uh, keep uh, eyes on the editor and viewer, and, and hopefully you'll see some good stuff coming along. Take care. Thanks.